All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, uh, we opened up this Netgear router and identified that we had um, the SBI flash chip, which looked to be unobstructed by anything, so we could easily put a chip clip on it. And we identified that we have header pins on um, the, the UART uh, ports um, and that we could pretty easily uh, connect to those uh, pins and that is what we're going to do in this video. So we're going to be using this uh, WaveShare USB to TTL adapter. This is a very um, inexpensive adapter. You can get this off of Amazon for uh, 10 or $15 and it works very well. You can see that there are eight pins on one side and USB on the other. So I'm using a three foot long USB cable extender uh, to make this easy to use. I have the router uh, plugged in um, to an adapter, but it is not powered on yet. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do here is, uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug this in and you can see that uh, it powers on and it, it lights up. Um, you have the option for a 5 volt and 3 point um, 5 volt and and 3.3 volts and I have it set to 3.3 because that's typically what UART is running on um, and now that this is plugged in over here on the uh, terminal if I were to run uh, LS LS USB and instead of showing everything connected to USB on my machine, I just want to grep for uh, what I know this WaveShare adapter is going to show up as, and I know it will show up as uh, serial. So uh, let me do a dash I for case and sensitivity, and this is what the output from LS USB gives us for the um, actual. USB to TTL adapter. Um, now, the program that we're going to be using to connect to the um, router over serial, uh, over over um, uh, UART using a serial console is going to be a Minicom. You, you can also use screen, but I'm going to use Minicom. So if I do what is a Minicom get back that it is a friendly serial communication program now over here um, on the uh, router here I have my my adapter now I need to go ahead and connect my uh, wires so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the green for ground we know that the ground pin is this top one and then I'm just going to pick, it doesn't really matter, um, I'll use yellow for what I believe to be the uh, RX pin and then I'm going to use orange for what I believe is the TX pin and the last pin is the VCC pin which is the power, we do not touch that because we don't need to supply it with power because the board is receiving power from, from this. And, and this is, remember, this is powered off. Um, we're not powering it on yet. Next step is going to be to go ahead and um, connect the wires to this. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it to make it easier. And we'll start with the green. Now, if you look closely at this adapter, um, there's, there's uh, two sets of pins. We're trying to use these on, on the left, which corresponds to the to the upper row um, of pins. So we have RX, TX, ground, and VCC. We're not using the VCC. So I'll connect the ground to the ground, which is right right there. This is going to be that pin, and then I am going to connect what I believe is the RX pin on the router which would be the yellow now this is where it gets a little weird you don't connect RX to RX 
you, you connect RX to TX and TX to RX. So I believe that this is the RX on the router. So I'm going to connect what I believe the RX is to the TX on the adapter. And I believe that this orange is the TX on the router. So I'm going to connect the TX to the RX on the adapter. And basically, I mean, this is, you don't have to complicate it. If we're wrong, then we'll just simply reverse the two and then we'll try it again. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my USB cable. And you actually, um, we have power, but if you look, do it again, you can kind of see the TX and the RX light up too. See that? So leave that right there. And back over here, try to get that to stay. So uh, remember the board is still powered off. Now back over here on the um, in the uh, terminal here on my on my machine, I am going to run uh, Minicom with dash H for help, and that'll give us all of our options. And um, of these, the main ones that I want to use are going to be dash B for the baud rate and dash capital D for the uh, device. Um, and I'll go ahead and do dash capital C to capture everything to a uh, file to save for later. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I need to identify on which node this USB to TTL adapter is being recognized on. Uh, so I could do that a couple ways. The easiest for me is just going to be to run D message. And this is uh, the product string and the manufacturer string for the adapter. This is also called an FTDI adapter. Um, here's a serial number. But uh, we're looking for this right here. So this is the key piece of information that I'm looking for. So I know it's going to be sitting on the node that is referenced as TTY USB O or zero, whatever that is. I'm going to say it's a zero. So clear the screen. If I run LS dev TTY with an asterisk, you'll see uh, we have all of these that pop up. But this is the one right here that it's connected to. So uh, that is going to be what we use for the device, um, which is that capital D. So for the baud rate, which is kind of like the rate at which uh, the data, I, I would say they, the data transmits, the, the speed, I think, is, is how you would say that. Um, uh, typically for these devices, it is going to be 9600 or 115200 more commonly 115200 so i'm just going to uh, go with what is usually the default which is 115200 there's actually a, a program you can use uh, to um, determine this but i'll only go that far if i were to run into problems so with that being said let's go ahead and do sudo uh, minicom and we're going to do uh, dash B for the baud rate, and I'm going to do 115200, and I'm going to do dash capital D for the device, which we know is sitting on dev TTY USB 0. And finally, uh, and this is completely optional, but I'm going to do dash capital C and save all of the output um, to a file, and I'll just call it. Uh, boot 
dot log because what we're going to see here um, initially are going to be uh, messages as this router is booting up. So let me go ahead and hit enter and we are now going to uh, power on the board and if all is well we should see some text scrolling past on the screen. So go ahead and power the board up and initially we, we're getting good results. I see U-Boot up here uh, which is the bootloader and this is great. It's exactly what you want to see. Um, that lets us know that we uh, most likely have everything correct otherwise we wouldn't be seeing this so this is a great sign um, there's the MAC address right here of the router um, DNS mask is starting up I could probably scroll up yeah It'll let me back scroll so I go back up to the top um, let's see, we, we, we can immediately see that we're using U-Boot as the uh, bootloader. Okay, it's making reference to U-Boot. And um, here is the address to the Ethernet uh, Squash FS. So we know it's, it's going to have a Squash FS file system. And there's the location to where it is referenced at there's the boot image we have a Linux kernel it's using MIPS um, LZMA compression and booting open WRT so it's probably running a version of open WRT as its uh, operating system and see what else we got here's our boot arguments right here there it is the reference to the baud rate so we know that that's correct which we already know that's correct because we wouldn't be seeing any output if it wasn't so there there's literally the boot arguments right there all in one row all in one line and uh let's keep going and uh, the dash capital c um, is basically it's saving all of this output everything that you see on the screen this is all being saved to a file that I named boot.log and um, we see reference to a busy box so uh, yeah this is great this is like exactly what you would um, what you would want to see there's the default uh, MAC address right there and it looks like it is trying to start up all of its services what else do we have here Theros which we know is the chip uh, manufacturer and look at this so it says creating access point AP for Cato. So it looks like whoever previously owned this router had uh, named the, uh, had given the router the name of Cato. So we now know, we now know that. And that basically is, is very interesting because that lets you know that whoever was using this router last, um, information at the name of the access point and potentially password information is still on this board um, however long ago this may have been I'm sure it's you know the same information is probably no longer being used but we definitely see some residual um, identifiers from whoever owned this previously so somebody had named their access point Cato so that's definitely interesting to note and what else do we have uh what's this not dns hijack mode okay and now it looks like we're getting some type of error or something malformed netlink message and this just seems to keep repeating okay so that's the end of that um and uh 
now I'm running into a slight problem because at this point I should just be able to hit enter and drop to a root shell that would that would be what what um, the next step would be and from that point I would be able to uh, traverse through um, the file system and uh, you know dump the the RAM and so forth but I'm hitting enter repeatedly and nothing is happening um, now I'm hitting space I'm hitting pretty much everything now nothing is happening so that leads me to believe uh, that we may have to short a um, short a pin so basically we'll end up having to do that in another video but this is a, a, a great start um, this tells us that we got our RX and TX pins uh, correct because if we didn't have them correct we wouldn't have um, human readable text like this it would it would it would not be an it would not appear like this it would it would be unreadable so uh, all, all signs point to us having everything correct but the fact that I can't hit return and drop to a shell leads me to believe that I need to um, short one of the pins so in other words um, I'm receiving from the RX I'm, I'm receiving data but I'm not able to transmit anything uh, via key presses it, I think that would be the correct way of saying that and the reason that I'm probably not able to do so is because <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that I need to uh, basically short the pins out to be able to have access to to the TX pin so um, we'll have to do that in another video but nonetheless uh, this is this is great this is exactly what we're going to see and the thing I like most about this is that we can see that the um, access point name is K though and, and that tells us that there's still information residing on this router and I want to see if we can get to that just for the sake of doing so and demonstrating that if um, if you're going to dispose of this stuff uh, you should be um, you should be truly disposing of it and leaving no information on it. You should, you shouldn't just be letting this stuff fall into the hands of of anybody. In in my opinion, uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, hope you guys got something out of this video. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you in the next one.